Hello fellow trailblazers, welcome to my platforms, Escapes with TK, and of course the podcast, Money Adventures with TK. This is a platform for amazing conversations on anything personal finance, travel, and lifestyle. Now, of course, if you're new to the channel, three simple things to always remember. Firstly, my name is Tukiso Tiki Ntebe. I'm a personal finance coach, I'm a travel enthusiast, and I'm a lifestyle kind of guy. Secondly, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends and ask them to subscribe. And then thirdly, last but not least, remember to leave a comment below to let me know what you think about this particular video. Now, in today's video, it is the month of July. Today is the 13th of July or the 14th of July. I'm not too sure. Don't ask me why. But July is regarded as National Savings Month. What does that mean for you as a person and for you as a trailblazer? Simply, it means that this month is where we encourage you to take care of your savings in particular. So whether you have savings, whether you don't have savings, this is the month where we have conversations around savings. Now, you'll recall that firstly, <laughs> COVID-19 exposed just how financially unprepared many of us are. We went into a lockdown and we did not have the potential to earn an income. <laughs> so why is savings very important? In this video, I'm going to unpack all the things you need to know when it comes to savings in particular. I keep saying that all the time. Anyway, so what's the difference between saving and investing? So for me, I like to think about saving as you go to university, you commit to a four year degree, you study hard, you stay up late at night, and then you get your degree. Investing on the other side is where your money starts working for you. So now you've graduated, you have this degree, you have potential to earn income in leaps and bounds and abundance. So that's the difference between. So savings are usually very short term and uh, investments are usually very longer term. Secondly, now that you have the definition between saving and investing, what's the next thing? The next thing is for you to set your savings goals. Now, usually we speak about smart goals, goals that are specific, goals that are measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. So this is, for example, where you say, I want to go to New York as an example, mm, if you can still afford to travel. <laughs> so I want to go to New York in October 2022. And of course, I need X amount of money to do that. So now that I have my goals that is specific, measurable, attainable and realistic, now I can start thinking about where to put my savings. Now, obviously, it does not have to be a savings uh, goal such as travel. It could also be your tuition fees. It could be deposit for a new car. It could be saving for the sake of saving. The book Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel says that save for the sake of saving. So you could actually just save for the sake of saving or just to have emergency funds should anything go wrong. So now that you have your goal out of the way, the next step is where do I save? Many people always ask me, TK, where do I save? Now, there are many ways for you to save. You can use the traditional banks. Open a savings account with your bank. You can go to the central bank of Lesotho, for example, if you are in Lesotho and start your investment or savings using treasury bills. You can have a money market fund, for example, with an asset manager or under a collective investment scheme, which I'll explain in a different video. Or you could use mobile met, mobile network operators. Um, I won't mention any brands because they're not paying for this video. <laughs> but you could use that as well. So you could also use Mahato or stock fells in the South African context. Mahato for me are very particular because this is where people come together with the same goal and they commit. And it also holds you accountable for you to achieve the savings goals. So that's the next step. You've now identified how to do that. Now, for example, if you're using your savings account or your mobile money network operators, or you're using your asset managers to save, the other thing that becomes very important is for us to leverage and use technology. What do I mean by that? Saving, guys, is already extremely difficult. 
because it requires a lot of discipline, it requires a lot of focus, and it requires consistency, the word consistency. So how can you take that burden away from yourself? Well, automation. What do I mean by automation? This is where you can either sign up with a third party, like an asset manager, for example, a debit order. A debit order is where the money, where the asset manager, for example, comes into your operating account. They take money out of your account and then they put it into your savings account. You could also set this up yourself using the internet banking, depending on which bank you're using. So, for example, you go into internet banking, www.da-da-da-da, you go to schedule payments, you set up what is called a standing or a stop order from your transaction account into your savings account. That way you automate, you relieve yourself of the responsibility of doing that. But I must caution you, however, if you are going to do this, whether it's a debit order or a standing order, it's important for you to provide for that. So for example, if it's on the 25th of every month, you need to make sure that there's money in the account every single month so that it can go from this account to the savings account seamlessly. Now we've spoken about automation. What other things are very important when it comes to saving? So for me, when it comes to saving, there are two other things that are very, very important. The first one is what is called inflation. Inflation is the general increase in prices of food, commodities, and everything else in between. You will know how expensive petrol is. You will know expensive how expensive food is. So inflation erodes the value of your money. So currently in Lesotho, last I checked, it was at 7.3%. If you are earning an interest less than that, it means that your money is losing value. The second thing that's also very important is your interest rate. So when you are putting money, particularly with the banks or an asset manager, it is very important for you to determine how much interest you are earning on that particular thing and then compare it with your it, the rate of inflation. So those are things that are very, very important. Those are the risks that you need to be very mindful of. Thirdly, the costs. There may be costs associated to opening the investment. And then the last one is withholding tax. The tax man always wants to come in and creep in and take that money. <laughs> so I think at some point, the interest that you're earning because it is income will be taxed. So let's do a quick recap. We've spoken about what the difference between saving and investing is. We've spoken about how to set smart goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. We also spoke about where to start saving if you want to start saving. And then fourthly, we spoke about the importance of automation. Now, now that we have all of that, how can you move forward? So many a time people will say, hmm, TK, I don't have enough money to start saving. Well, I'm here today to tell you, start with what you have. If it's 50 bucks, if it's 100 bucks, if it's 150, what is important is for you to start. A lot of people don't start because they think you need to have a lot of money to start saving. You don't need to have a lot of money to start saving. It's a discipline and a habit that you develop as you go along. Secondly, is now that you have started, okay, you need to constantly be disciplined to remember why you've started saving. And there's a point that I wanted to speak about that I actually forgot, <laughs> but that's a story for another day. So it's very important for you to start saving and for you to be consistent. And then the last one, it just came back. Let's get into the habit of paying yourself first. How do you pay yourself first? So say for example, it's month end you receive your income, whether you are employed, you are self-employed, you are a freelancer or whatever the case may be. The principle is before you pay anything else or anyone else, regardless of how much you owe them, regardless of the level of responsibility, the notion or the belief is you need to pay yourself first. How do you do that? You take at least 15% of your income and you put it away into your savings, your uh, whatever product you're using or whatever instrument you're using to save because when life happens and you don't have any money, those savings come through for you. So that's a principle that we are advocating for to say, pay yourself first. 
What people usually do is they pay the rent, the mortgage, the school fees, and all the other monthly expenses and actually leave saving to leave saving as a last thing to do. So what I'm saying to you is the first thing that you need to do when you receive any kind of income, 15%, take it, put it away for a rainy day, towards your goals, towards your savings, and to do that for yourself. In a nutshell, that is basically all I got for you. Today's conversation is really about developing a culture of savings, taking care of your finances, and remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the section below. Let me know how you are saving, if you are saving, how the journey is going. Thirdly, if you are not saving, what you're gonna do to do what you're gonna do differently from this moment onwards. And then like, comment, subscribe, because we want to grow the community of Trailblazers. Now I've been away for a while. <laughs> So this is where I actually want to give a shout out to Titan Lens. They've literally been MIA, <laughs> but they're back. I'm hoping that they're back. I have a new sound engineer on board as well, James. I call him James. Get a tabile MPD. So he's taking care of the audio. So if the audio is a bit weird or is a bit um, or incredibly amazing, he is behind that. And beyond that, to all the creatives out there, Number one, stop being shady. Number two, show up and be professional. Number three, can we work and create content? That's all I have to say for today, guys. Uh, money is an adventure. Let's enjoy the ride. Please follow me on all social media platforms. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube. The podcast is also available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. And of course, any other podcasting platform I am there. So go there, follow me, like, follow the creative team that I spoke about as well, and let's create content. But most importantly, let's take care of our money, let's remember to live, and as is tradition, love, peace, and the dollars at 17 Rand plus <laughs> to the Tsar and to the loot. Cheers, guys. <laughs>